Desk. My name is Najme Ismail. Now, professionals from Turkana and Pokot counties are calling for a mapping of boundaries which they say will help to resolve the ongoing crisis. The professionals say the affected counties should revert to the original boundaries. They also want the armed forces deployed to these areas to counter insecurity. They spoke to the media at a Nairobi hotel. We need to change the narrative. There is nothing like cattle rustling anymore. And that has been the, 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 the statement that the government is using to justify their laxity. There is nothing like cattle rustling. It's about robbery with violence. You have heard about the issue of the boundaries, the, the issue about shared resources. We are talking about politics. Those politicians who are trying to instigate this issue to justify themselves. The issue of devolution in the pastoral set up. It is totally misunderstood, politically manipulated by the politicians, just to mean that Trukana County is for Trukanas. West Pokot is West for Pokot. Samburu for Samburus, which is not right. And the politicians are using that to make sure that they instigate these issues. The government borrows lessons from Uganda on disarmament. I think it's common knowledge that the government of Uganda did a deployment of military to have camps every 10 square kilometer along the conflict borders. And I think today, we've seen across the border, the Karmojong are living in peace for what the government has been able to do. So the Kenyan government need to emulate from this. Now, the number of fatalities following the cholera outbreak in Nakuru County has risen to 12. Official reports that infections have also risen from 76 to 85. County health officials have taken a number of measures to contain the situation, such as developing isolation centers, creating public awareness, disinfecting toilets, banning of food hawking, among others. One open sewer line that drained its waters near Muslim Primary School and following four kilometers along estates down to river Ndarugo was blocked just a day ago. The first outbreak case within the region was reported on 24th of April from Ponda Mali area in Ronda Estate where a mother and a child died after depicting symptoms of the illness. Now according to county health officials however the first two casualties had received a visitor from Migori where the first cholera outbreak case was reported but they say the spread is due to unclean water through sewer lines coming into contact with broken clean water pipes as a result of vandalization. Ronda Estate has reported the most victims followed by Bondeni and other areas. Uh, they have only recommended what, uh, how, how cleanliness uh, is going to be maintained in the school, but they have provided uh, nothing. We visited Pondamali and uh, it was a sad scenario. The food handlers have not been licensed. They are selling products that have not been inspected. Like there is a place we went where, where that where that child died, the first child, just the next, at the neighborhood, they are selling pig offals. You know, when a pig is slaughtered, all those offals are thrown away. Now that's what that community buys and sells to the people. Still on matters health, two people have been arrested after the City Council of Nairobi officers raided poultry kiosks along Jogorod. The two are said to be slaughtering chicken without license. Addressing the press today, Charles Makori, a veterinary doctor, stated that the condition of the place where the chickens are being slaughtered is not clean. This comes as a result of cholera outbreak in the country, which has left a number of people dead and several hospitalized. Makori advised all the poultry vendors to use only the licensed slaughterhouses which include Bama, Maziwa and Kariako. Our concern is to protect the consumer. Uh, these are matters of uh, food safety. The law is very clear that um, slaughter of animals is supposed to be done in a licensed slaughterhouse. Yeah, this is where we have officers who do anti-mortem inspection and post-mortem inspection. Anyone buying any poultry or meaty stuff must look for a stamp from the county government.
Now, as the Jubilee government nears the halfway mark in its term, Ipsos conducted a survey and asked several Kenyans on what they think about the laptop project, among other issues that have been generating public debate. Now, moving on, we have the Global Veterans Association, which is a group of retired police officers, is urging the government to consider using ex-servicemen in the fight against cattle rustling. The association attributed the runway insecurity on lack of a clear command structure in the National Police Service. The ex-servicemen say the present-day cattle rustling has been commercialized and requires new strategies to combat it. No one really knows how old he is. He could be 70 years old, maybe 80. Well, what is not in doubt is that Mze Almea Asava is the oldest chokora in Kisumu town. Here's Victor Ogale with that story. Many residents of Kisumu City may view the Kachok dumping site as a misplaced project by the county government. There is another lot that is ripping from its presence there. Meet Mze Almea Asava or Munya as he is popularly known here. Mnya hails from Gambogi in Vihiga County. Almea Asava left his rural home to Kisumu in search of greener pastures. He was only a teenager then, never to return home ever again. We are told that he was among the first group of street urchins to venture into the paper bag selling business. <laughs> Mzee tunaanza kuishi na yeye hapa kitambo sasa tumeshaka na yeye miaka mingi However, Almea, who is believed to be in his late 70s, is slowly losing his sight. He cannot fend for himself anymore. He depends on his fellow Achins, whom he has mentored and taught how to survive. Even though he cannot vividly remember his kin, Munya is sure that poverty may have contributed to his leaving home. <laughs> Kutoka nyumba hii huyu mtu alikuja babu hii vitu vilibindolewa ni babu huyu alikuta alikuta tunakula msuri huyu mtu alikuja kuharibu sasa hii kitu me tunataka ndoto zingine na hii kitu hakuwa naomba paka sasa siwizi hakuwa minyonge hapa akapiga chupa yake hapa anataka maji akilea e ugali moto ugali moto sasa hizo anataka chakula tunamletea paka Mkati tunamlete hapa, alalangi nja hapa, lakini kuna saa zingine tunakosa. Inabidi tu alale nja. According to Kisumu city manager Doris Sombara, there are over 75 people living within the dump site. With the planned relocation of the dump site to Kibigori, which is over 35 kilometers away, Mnya and his colleagues will be rendered homeless. Victor Ogale, KTN, in the county of Kisum. All right, the polls have opened in the most unpredictable general election race for a generation as it emerges today that a quarter of voters say they could still change their minds. Analysts believe Britain is heading for a second hang parliament in succession after the most drawn-out election campaign uh, since the war appeared to be ending in near deadlock with Labour and the Conservatives tied at 35% each. Prime Minister David Cameron's Conservatives and uh, Ed Miliband's opposition Labour Party have been neck and neck in opinion polls for months, indicating neither will win enough seats for an outright majority in the 650-seat parliament. Now, a hang parliament could yield weak government, but propel the United Kingdom towards a vote on EU membership and stop Scottish, uh, Scottish uh, desires for succession. Britain's post-World War II 
political consensus which saw the Conservatives and, of course, uh, the Labour take turns in government is crumbling as once marginal parties in Scotland and England steal millions of votes from established parties. And, of course, we were hoping to speak to James Smatt, who is in the UK, uh, to give us updates on what's happening in the United Kingdom. But I guess technology always has to fail somehow. But we'll try and hope to get to him so we can be able to speak to him about those elections. I'll now hand you over to Najma Ismail for more on what's happening in the world of sport uh, to give us updates on what's happening uh, right there. And uh, hopefully we can get James Smart back on Skype so he can give us updates on what exactly he is observing on that end uh, to, to also let us know. But just so you know, the polls opened at 7 a.m. UK time and 50,000 polling stations are across the United Kingdom. Polling stations are close, uh, closing. Unlike we who close at 6 p.m., they are going to be closing at 10 p.m. James Smart now joins me live from the United Kingdom. James, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, first, of course, this is an unusual election compared to what we're used to back here in Kenya. Uh, what are your observations for this election? Well, uh, just as I caught some a bit of your analysis there. First, you have more than 20 plus million people going to the polls. Uh, then it's, it, it's a different system whereby people have to elect their MPs who in turn, uh, you know, elect or sort of bring together and get a prime minister. So in effect, the people don't elect their prime minister directly. They elect MPs uh, in different parties and that party uh, end up, you know, making a majority. Or in this case, as the polls are suggesting, uh, a minority government or a coalition government of some sort. Uh, but a few differences here about the election here and the rules it's sort of not an event as what you have back at home mm -hmm. uh, so well, today for instance uh, if i forgot we'll just get this point through today for instance there is no tv coverage of the polling stations you know say what who's polling where and that kind of thing yeah, it's in the laws that they sort of make the elections on an event per se so it's you have to do it before and after Right, and uh, for the first time, people have been able to register and vote online. Have you been able to see some, or how the entire process uh, was being conducted? Well, one of the things that has, is very progressive is the fact that you can have people registered from their postcodes. Uh, so it means if you in a house that has three or four people, uh, that postcode you know, can be given three ballot papers and you can vote, uh, and you just need to, you know, uh, tap an envelope and you know, send it through. Mm -hmm. That has worked very well, make sure that the numbers, you know, are sufficient that people actually do vote, so you don't have to literally go to a polling station and the like. But most importantly, uh, online, uh, people were registered online. So this is the matter of the electoral commission sending you an email, uh, say, please, as your teacher, confirm us, and then confirm that, and then should they do that or through and and it sort of helps show up the number so that mm -hmm. people don't have on that election day which like i've mentioned is not a public holiday as we have back home and that sort of thing that yes. people can put from their homes and from their houses well, thank you so much, James Smart, for your observations and giving us an insight on what's happening in the United Kingdom. We're also seeing 9,000 council seats being contested across 279 local authorities in the United Kingdom. And well, we'll keep you up to date on what's happening in the UK regarding the general election there. I'll now hand you over to Najma Ismail for more on what's happening in the sport world. Well, thank you very much for watching this exciting news desk bulletin. My name is Najma Ismail.